Damas y caballeros, están todos listos. This is going to be a vicious knockout. Vicious. Fight fans, welcome back. You said you weren't yourself in the last two fights. Were you yourself tonight? This Canelo, no, nobody can beat this Canelo. A cadre of compatriots is closing in on one of boxing's premier operators. And when will we see this Canelo next? Cinco de Mayo against two? Cinco de Mayo. Whoever, I don't care. As the target on his back grows, a Mexican star must decide how the final pages of his legacy will be written. He's taking pages out of Mayweather's book, how he's orchestrating his career. At the end of the day, I always win. Step forward, a vibrant challenger brimming with hunger. Motivated to inscribe his own name into the history books by displacing the master. Jaime Munguia will be undisputed very soon. Mark my words. It's Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Jaime Munguia. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. You know, fa fans believe uh, you're ducking Benavidez by this $200 million price tag. But if they come and say, I offer to, I offer to you 150 to 200 million, I fight tomorrow. What's your message to the fans, to your critics, who say that you're dodging Benavidez? Right now, Canelo is bobbing and weaving away from the big question. The boxing world salivates over a David Benavidez mega fight, while the cinnamon stylist remains determined to do things his own way. That's not my fans, that's my critics, that's a difference, and they always have something to say about me. When he's Golovkin, when he's Lara, when he's Paro, when he's... Now he's Benavides. Renowned for taking fights on a risk and reward basis, as Canelo's career winds down, every pick from here on in must hit the mark. I'm like, what about David Benavides? The natural super middleweight, who's 28 and 0, with 24 knockouts, who's been begging for Canelo to get into the ring with him. Unifying titles becomes a habit, and any silk pajama complacency must be kept at bay until retirement. Now that Canelo is picking Munguia, where he said he would never want to fight a Mexican, this is probably a good start. You know, he's fighting a Mexican, yeah. meaning that his next fight could be against Benavides. In the absence of one star, opportunity knocks elsewhere, offering a profile boost similar to the one Floyd Mayweather extended to him all those years ago. Yo, Canelo was young when he went up to fight Floyd. This is not nothing new in boxing. The question will be if McGee is ready for the test. Um, at the end of the day, he is the face of boxing. And Canelo ain't scared of anybody. He hasn't, he hasn't showed any fear in fighting anyone. As a specter looms in the background, a young lion steps forward, ready to generate a vivid celebration of Mexican boxing. I love history of boxing and this and that, and you take a look at like Cotto when he fought Canelo. I think they were like the same age where Cotto was uh, the older guy and Canelo was, you know, the passing of the torch, you know, so this is almost similar, I mean, with Canelo and, and Munguia. Canelo Alvarez, are you watching? He's 43-0 with 34 knockouts! Six years ago, Jaime Munguia came into the public consciousness when his name was put forward as a Golovkin opponent. Your team at Golden Boy, they like a fight with you against Gennady Golovkin. ¿Quieres tener en esa lista de oponentes obligatorios para tu carrera? Eh, pues yo pienso que los obligatorios que todo mundo quiere es Canelo y Golovkin. Here goes the white towel, it's in the ring, and that is it. Entonces yo creo que son unas peleas, son, la, son un par de peleas que se van a dar en un futuro. However, administrators slammed that door shut due to the unknown Tijuana Tornado's inexperience. Attaching their name to such a valued champion at a time was a savvy move from Team Mungia. Lingering on the psychological outskirts of the whole 
Canelo versus Triple G rivalry. We've got this kid named uh, Jaime Munguia. It took Golovkin seven rounds to take out Sharameta. Munguia did it in six, making Sharameta retire in his stool. Who could turn out to be uh, a factor in that division. It wouldn't shock me to someday see Jaime Munguia fight either or both Canelo Alvarez and uh, Gennady Golovkin. And that's the core of our focus in boxing right now. After years of angling for a big fish, their persistence has now paid off. Our plan worked and we uh, used some of that psychology and, uh, and uh, Jaime Munguia got the Canelo fight. So we're all happy, we're excited. Jaime Munguia's career was built on this moment. Absolutely, Thomas Taylor, one of the best in the business. Oh, and all of a sudden, just like a lucky ball, Munguia puts Kelly down. Kelly. Despite building a statistically impressive record under the guidance of Golden Boy Promotions, Munguia has never fought on this stage against such an elevated level of opposition. Well, this is the most experienced opponent that he has faced in his career. Dave Rosado has fought at a world-class level. Jaime Munguia is giving him a pretty good beating. Oh, Close man firing away to the body. Get a good kick though. Lands a big right hand to send Munguia back. Struggling at times against Sergei Derevyanchenko. The Ukrainian has a reputation for dishing out a hard night's work to anyone. They should know by now that he does not have good feet and that this could have been a bad night for him. His body shot by Munguia. And now it goes Gary Vincenzo! That's exactly what Jaime Munguia needed! And at the end of the day, even though he won, now he's exposed. Even though he won, he didn't look good. And even though he won, his stock really didn't go up. Munguia needs to have a dominant performance against a fighter who's been there, done that. And if he can dominate John Ryder, if he can stop John Ryder, that's when you open up some eyes. He needs to stop. He needs to stop John Ryder. He needs to do what Canelo couldn't do. That's how you make a statement. That's how you get guys like Benavides and Canelo and all the big dogs at 168 to look in your direction. How do you keep yourself focused when you keep hearing the rumors that should you be successful against John Ryder, that you could be lined up for Canelo Alvarez in May? He knows what could be next, but you can't get to next until you deal with now. Comparing fighters using their mutual opponents is a useful exercise, if not an exact science. Do you want to put on a better performance than Canelo did against Ryder? Do you want to knock him out to strengthen your cause for a Canelo fight? He caught him again and sent him down in round two! You feel like he settled down? Oh, he's dead! I'm ready to do it, and if not, we'll go to the 12th rounds, but I think I will do it. Munguia scored a stoppage statement over John Ryder eight months after the Brit held out for 12 rounds against Canelo. The guy that, that Canelo fought also, and Canelo went the distance with Ryder. Right. Canelo went the distance with him, and Munguia drops him a few times and finishes him and stops him. You have to give him an A-plus because he did something that nobody would ever do, mm -hmm. and that's stop and knock out Ryder. They're stopping it! Canelo Alvarez, are you watching? Jaime Munguia will be undisputed very soon. Mark my words. Munguia's tough. He's got a good chin. Um, he, he's fit and he, he throws a lot of shots, but I think Canelo's that bit too smart. Um, they'll just come down to the miles on the clock for Canelo, I believe. Now developed into a genuine 168 pounder, this is Munguia's time to shine. Uh, uh, what's, what's, what's? To come out here, show some balls, and stop hiding behind Al Heyman and fight me. Age 27 at six feet tall, Munguia has matured into a powerful specimen in his fighting prime. Competing in 199 rounds across 43 contests, he holds a 79% KO ratio since turning pro in 2013, age 16. Both of them started their careers as young teenagers in their hometown in a four round fight in the super lightweight division. So De piedra, Munguia. Who would guess that a number of years later they are meeting in Las Vegas, May the 4th? Qualify for the Olympics, so he turned pro at 16 in Mexico. And he dropped over here in the first. Since then, Canelo has traversed weight classes, fighting every conceivable style, and amassing a 62 and 2 slate with 65% KOs. As Canelo Alvarez. Solidifies his place in 
history. The pound for pound king. Viva México, cabrones! Canelo's longtime coaching unit, the Reynosos, will keep their man ticking over as he looks to burrow inside and negate Munguia's reach advantage. If there is anything to be said, I mean, listen, what's one of the hardest things to do in boxing and combat sports more generally? It's to stand a post with a world title and welcome the number one guy after number one guy as they try to take it from you. The only man ever to beat Gennady Golovkin is Canelo Alvarez, and he's about to do it again. Once trained exclusively by Mexican legend Eric Morales, Munguia now has offensive veteran Freddie Roach refining his craft. How exactly do you see it playing out? Do you see Munguia actually getting a stoppage against Canelo? Or? Yes, I do. And nobody's ever hurt him, nobody's ever dropped him. No, no, he didn't him. hurt me before. Freddie Roach is a great trainer, but more of an offensive-minded trainer. Now, Jaime Munguia was always already offensive-minded, non-stop. I didn't see any subtle changes in his defense or his approach. That offensive instinct has led to guaranteed entertainment in the past as Munguia brings the heat. He's he physically he's stronger than him, right. you know, and he's younger. Uh, I think Jaime puts up a really good fight. There are two schools of thought about how it might play out. Some envisage a competitive clash with Munguia grabbing rounds off Canelo to make it interesting. Yeah, he has a shot to beat Canelo. All he needs to do is stay focused, stay motivated, and do what he needs to do because he has what it takes it to work in order to pull off the upset. Others simply believe Munguia's style is tailor-made for Canelo and expect sharp body blows and incisive counterpunches. Canelo is licking his chops for this fight. Him and Tanker, in my opinion, are two best counterpunchers in, in the game. This guy's still a made for him. You think Munguia has a chance? No, I think Munguia is going to get knocked out in about six or seven rounds. Munguia lacks defense. Lacks defense. He has shown a vulnerability to getting clipped and getting hurt. But he gets hurt a lot. I mean, he's been hurt with Tariano Johnson. A couple of big punches landing already for Johnson. With Gary Spike O'Sullivan. And that right hand right there landed right on the tip of the chin of Munguia. Dervinchenko rocked him a couple of times. Munguia's hurt! Munguia's hurt bad! Ryder was hitting him with some good big punches. Oh, nice uppercut there by Ryder. Once the younger man becomes tense and tentative, his output slows with every movement second guessed. McGee has a great chin, but really, nobody has a good enough chin when they face guys who can punch, who can time you and hit you clean. Whenever you're getting hit that cleanly, Canelo's gonna take advantage of that. Canelo will look to hunt Jaime down, maneuvering him into corners and constantly setting traps to head and body. Everything coming back though is so hard. It's like chopping a tree here, chopping a tree down. Bring those hands down. Oh my great. Hard shot. If Canelo produces a labored display similar to his clashes with Ryder in the third Golovkin battle, then Munguia's freshness makes him live and dangerous. Let him go out there and throw those hands. The guy throws combination punchers. There's not a lot of combination punchers out there these days. He's big for the weight class. He's durable. <laughs> Fighting with boundless energy early in his career, Munguia has evolved past the stage of clubbing foes into submission, setting up his attacks behind a disciplined jab the Baja California man is a legitimate power puncher and spiteful finisher. Before, Munguia would just go forward, 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 forward. But now he's learned how to box, and, and I think that, that could be something that, that could work for him uh, against uh, uh, Canelo. He's very exciting. I think he's going to be really exciting. Listen, him against Canelo is a great fight. Mm -hmm. I think it's an all-action fight. Scrutinized under a microscope of pound-for-pound -pound perfection, Canelo must look impressive. In this fight, Canelo is going to get a chance to get back to his highlight stuff. The four division title holder speaks of history and legacy, defending his undisputed status in the first ever world title clash of Mexicans above 160. This is a great source of pride for him because it's Mexico all over. I mean, yeah, maybe his youth, his speed, his punch output, his activity. It might cause problems for Canelo. For the winner, 
That fact should be instantly repeated as a sizable shadow of David Benavidez lurks over the Las Vegas event. I'm waiting for him to send me the contract. Them just know what's up. I'm right here waiting for him. Benavidez deserves a world title opportunity. He's been waiting in line for I don't know how long. Defeating Munguia garners even greater promotion and leverage for Canelo as a passing of the torch opportunity presents. He has guts, he has combinations, he has punching power, and he got a beard. And if you don't knock him out, you're not going to win the fight. Failing that, the winner of Baterbiev and Bivol, or the unique curiosity of a Terence Crawford clash, still remains. Canelo a big dude, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I believe in my abilities. None of these will be viable options if he does not first take care of business on May 4th against a man who wants to displace and replace him as the king of Mexican boxing. When I was coming up and I used to see him fight, I said, that's a good guy and I want to be like him. And today we have a chance to face him and hopefully we get to be like him one day.